wanted to start and then we are going to, all right. Um, good afternoon slash evening, um, depending on the time zone that we're here in. Um, thank you for joining us. This is um, our community guest talk and then I'll be the host for today's session. Um, we have um, Stephanie Wanju on the um, call today. Um, Stephanie was um, a batch three uh, trainee. Um, she's working with um, the largest telecommunication um, service um, provider in East Africa, Safaricom, as a data engineer. Um, she was in a team with um, Kevin during one of the projects um, during batch three. And uh, um, she has worked yeah, with a Nigerian company as a business intelligence analyst. And now she's a data engineer at Safaricom. Um, it's, a, it's nice to have you join us, um, Stephanie. I'm glad to be here. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, can you do a quick introduction about yourself? Okay, cool. So, hi everyone. Why am not? Why am I not seeing any videos? I want to see you guys. <laughs> I want this All to right. be interactive. Right? Yeah. You, you had the request, um, people. Turn on so your if, camera. If you, can, if you can, you can just turn off your camera as I do my introduction. I like to see you, and maybe say hi and see your faces. Uh, so my name is Stephanie Wanjiru Akenda. I'm a data engineer at Safaricom. I joined two months ago. I joined Safaricom two months ago. Uh, so I'll be clocking two months by the end of this month. Previously, I worked for a company in Nigeria called Simfix, which is an identity management, uh, a company that provides identity management solutions uh, to telcos in Nigeria. I worked as a BI developer stroke data analyst and I got that job through 10 Academy because when I graduated and they were doing the job matching, I was able to get that. So yeah, that's basically me. Um, so I joined Simfix. I'll just give you a background of um, my, my job or my career as of, as of now. I don't think I've even I've been in the job market for more than a year, but I'll just give you a bit of a background. So when I finished and graduated from 10 Academy, we had the job matching. Uh, I got into Simfix as a BI developer. As I said, when I joined the team at Simfix, they actually didn't have um, a, a good BI team. There was just one intern who was a BI developer and a DBA who was also coupling as a BI developer. So I joined the team and was supposed to build a team as a BI developer. So they just gave me access to databases and told me, do your thing. As a data analyst, do your thing. So from there, I came up with different projects for the company, like, so my main role was basically doing monthly, bi-weekly reports. I created um, dashboards for the different products that they had. I created pipelines for data pipelines for reporting and for visualization, just connecting the databases to the visualization tools like Tableau. And some databases were in Postgres, Oracle. So yeah, that's basically what I was doing in terms of creating the pipelines. And yeah, basically that. So when I, I, when I finished uh, 10 Academy, like when we were in 10 Academy, we used to have this non-technical, um, non-technical kind of sessions where you, we had a guy called Idris who'd take us through um, different things like having a vision, your two-year plan. And in my two-year plan, I always wanted to do data engineering. So when I was working at Simfix, I used to do um, some courses um, on the side just to, you know, build my skills in data engineering. 
And I reached out to a few people who are working at my current company, which is Safaricom, and I asked them the kind of tools that they're using. And, you know, they guided me through that. I got, I, 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 I became better in the data engineering field in terms of the tools that they were using. And I got to join Safaricom. So right now, on a day-to-day -day basis, what I mostly do is monitor the data lake and create pipelines. So that's just basically what I've done since I graduated from Tan Academy. So yeah. Oh, that's uh, a whole lot of uh, achievements, and I think uh, I think um, some of the batch I mean trainees are. Uh, you know, they, they selected their um, track. Some are going for the data engineering track, while some are selected uh, machine learning and engineering. I would imagine the data engineers um, ask, um, they have a lot of questions for you. So um, we'll be looking forward to, the, uh, to their questions. Just before we get into their um, questions, I also have a question as to what was the transition like apart from taking um, some online courses and the rest can you be more specific as to which online course you took and how easy was it in terms of transitioning from a business uh, intelligence analyst to a uh, data um, engineer? Oh, okay, cool. That's a good question. So I remember when we were, when I was part of the, when we were in 10 Academy, we had a data camp access for a full year. So there's a track in data camp called uh, data engineering, which gave you basics on things in data engineering, like Scala, like um, Apache's, I think Spark was there, Kafka is not there, uh, Python in terms of data engineering and how to use it. I also took a course on Udemy called um, zero, to, 0 to 100 in Hadoop. Or something because I learned that since uh, that Safaricom are using Hadoop as their framework, so I took up courses or courses that aligned what with what uh, Safaricom um, are doing because that that was my target company. So the first thing I did was to reach out to someone who is in Safaricom through LinkedIn. I just wrote him a message, told him I'm interested in this field. This is how much I've done and. He gave me a few pointers on the kind of tools that they're using. I've seen a question on the kind of tools that we use as Safaricom. Um, so we basically use Hadoop and integrate um, Apache Kafka. I saw you did a project with Kafka and NiFi. So all our uh, pipelines go through NiFi, Kafka, and then we send them to different data uh, sources like HBase, Hive, so such kind of things. Okay, thank you very much for that answer. Um, so um, you can type in your questions in the chat box and then she'll attend to it as soon as they come in. Uh, while we are waiting for the next question, I also have a question. Um, mm -hmm. In the, all of the pipelines that you have um, worked on, which one would you say I mean, how long would like the, the ones that you've deployed in the production, how many um, weeks or days did it like take you to complete it right from start to finish? Okay, um, I'd say about, depends on the complexity of the project. Mm -hmm. Like if you have different, if, if you have um, data coming from different sources, then integrating the tools can be a bit of a challenge. I think I've taken at most maybe two weeks because we're working in terms of in terms of like agile way and we have milestones. So by the, by the first two weeks, you have to be done with a particular part, which is for me building the pipelines. So I'd say two weeks and I also have a lot of support from my colleagues, so it's not that hard for me to create this pipeline. Okay, thank you. Um, there are other questions in the chat box. 
geometry okay, well, let me check. so what tools are using in safaricom as i said we use the hadoop framework which has um a lot of components in it there's zookeeper there's zookeeper for managing the resources there's ambari for visualizing and monitoring there's hbase which is a no sql kind of database there's hive um so every so hadoop on its own if you really understood if you really understand hadoop um we use most of the components that are in there and then we couple it with nifi so i don't know if you've, you've heard of nifi nifi and kafka so kafka for streaming right and then nifi for kind of integrating the different um sources how did i join safaricom oh i applied <laughs> station i applied um okay i applied uh went through the interview process so the first process was a coding interview with codility where we had uh we had to write some code in java um what else database a database database queries and the other one was just on agile agile framework because safaricom is really taking up the agile way of working so those are some of the questions that i got in the interview and then after that i had a one-on-one -on -one kind of interview with my manager and he asked me questions around basics of data engineering how do i understand hadoop how do i how do the components fit in if i'm given um hbase and nifi and kafka how am i going to connect all those components and create a good pipeline they also asked me about machine learning which i had learned at ten academy so yeah and then after that i got the offer how often do you integrate new tools mm, new tools not that often we you know you don't want to use everything right you want to use any the things that are of importance or are kind of bringing value to your work so we don't integrate i've not seen any new integrations of new tools as of now because we don't see the necessity we just use the basic tools that we think uh, are producing results how was the initial interview process when you joined safaricom or have gone through that how's your day-to-day -day work like um day-to-day -day work right now i don't have a lot of work on my my table so i wake up at 10 <laughs> i'm just being lazy i wake up at 10 uh we have the scrum a stand-up like the way we used to have it in 10 academy uh morning stand-up and we'd go through there's a project that i'm on and we'd go through the progress that we have made and then i'd pick up my other projects like right now i'm working on a monitoring um monitoring the whole data lake so i'm using grafana and prometheus for internal monitoring and i'm using another tool called uh, dynatrix oh someone asked about how often do you integrate new tools so right now i'm integrating new tools for monitoring so if there's a necessity for me to do it then i do it like for monitoring so for the better part of today i did um monitoring adding some new components to Prometheus and Grafana for internal monitoring and doing my presentation for Dynatrace, which is a monitoring tool, but that is for external monitoring. And then work on my own things like Java, because Hadoop is built with Java. So for me to be able to um, debug most of the issues that we have, I need to understand Java. So I've been taking that up. So that's just my normal day, reading and working. Are you working remotely or in office? I'm at home, I'm working remotely. I think for even with Nigeria is working remotely and right now we're also working remotely because of the COVID situation. What was your background like before 10 Academy? Oh, I took a course in math and computer science here in Kenya in JQuat, Jomo Kenyatta University. So yeah, so 
But before I joined 10 Academy, I had some knowledge in data science because I had actually um, done a couple of projects. So, yep, so I had basics in Python. I was able to build basic, um, what do I call them, websites using Django. So that, how was the role like when you just joined facing that it's your first DE job? Um, the first time I joined, it was quite overwhelming, right? Because um, there are, there's a lot, for a company like Safaricom, there's a lot of projects going on and you can easily get confused. But given the fact that I had been preparing, I had someone who guided me on the tools that I needed to prepare for. It was a bit easier for me. So when I was given a project, I was able to easily navigate because, you know, I had the basic knowledge of how Kafka works, how Kafka streaming works, how the consumer and the producer and all that. So it was a bit easier for me. But I'd also say my team also supports me whenever, you know, there are days when I don't even know what I'm doing. Like they give me a project, they tell me, oh, there's this error, we need someone from data engineering to support us. So I go in and I don't even know where to start, right? But those days, I think a lot of research and asking my fellow colleagues on what to do, yeah, that has really helped me. What is the challenging part in being a data engineer? Challenging part, oh, there's a lot. Like any tech uh, career, there's a lot of things that are happening. Like uh, there's a lot of upgrades. Um, there's a lot of tools that are being built that you need, you need to take up, you need to learn. So a lot of learning, I'd say, will be my main challenge and trying to balance learning with my work. So, yeah. I don't think there's any other question. So, yeah. I, I think they're thinking, they thinking about it. Uh, okay, there's another one from Kibru. How long do you stay in a call with your team and how often do you have a meet per day? Okay. How how long? Well, it depends. Sometimes we have war rooms. A war room is when there's an emergency, like maybe your project, maybe hive, the hive server went down and you know that just messes up the whole pipeline and people from microservice are saying they're not getting the data they need and it's affecting the customer. So if it's a war room, we stay in the war room until we're able to solve that issue. If it's a normal stand-up, a normal stand-up can be between 15 to 25 minutes, which, so every project has its own stand-up. So I'm like in two projects, so I have those two stand-ups in the morning. But with a war room, you just stay in the war room until you fix that issue. How often do you have a meet per day? So, a meet per day, maybe, so by a meet, or is it a meeting? How often do you have a meeting per day? So maybe at most per day, I think the most I've done is about four meetings lasting for 35 minutes each. Which one do you use often? Extract transform load or extract load transform? Well, it depends, but okay. Thinking about the projects, I think I use ETLs more for me, but I'd, I've seen other projects where they've used ELT because they had their own reasons on why they took that approach. So it depends with what you're working on, right, or the project. How long did it take you to actually deliver value to staff? To actually deliver value? <laughs> I think I'm still in the process of delivering value, right? Um, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to come up to speed with all the projects that are in the different departments that we support. So 
it's not i'm not trashing myself i'm not sure i'm yet to deliver value like i did in my last company basically because of the gaps i still have in terms of my knowledge in data engineering so yeah i think it's still a process that i'm in how do you try to keep up with tasks that may be new how do i try to keep up with tasks that may be new um i well here at safaricom when you're given a project when a project is handed over to you they try and make it as smooth as possible so you have someone like i'm i'm a junior right now i'm not a professional yet i'm still an associate so i'm not given a project fully to work on it as mine i still have someone who has more knowledge than me or more experience than me that um can always come in and you know guide me and show me what exactly to do so if i'm given a new project or a new task or i'm tackling a new task I always go to that person who's actually like my mentor in terms of um, our team. And he'd guide me through and give me the steps that this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how you're supposed to do it. Something of that sort. Sometimes everyone is busy and you don't have anyone to go to. So Google is your friend. I think there's nothing under the sun that is not in Google yet. And if it if there isn't, you'll probably get someone to show you or get an answer from google how much time do you spend on work daily um these days um from eight to five if i wake up at eight or from 10 to around seven if i wake up at 10 around 10 from nine when i wake up at nine then 10 to seven so i wake up at seven eight to five so but previously when i was working at simfix I'd spend, and this was quite of a shocker. I think the network is acting up. Let's give it some time. just connect my so as I was saying when I joined Simfix I used to work from 8 in the morning till around 10 p.m. at night because of the kind of work environment I was in so I think with Safaricom I've been able to manage my work and my life like just having that work-life balance so yeah and now I've lost, okay, I've not lost your questions. How much, how much, how do you manage to contribute in two projects simultaneously? Well, I'm actually supposed to be having. And we're still recruiting more. Because, like right now, I'm supposed to be having even more than two projects. I'm supposed to be having around four projects to work on. But, you know, because I'm still new, they can't just hand me everything. So how I manage to contribute in two projects simultaneously is make sure I have something to do for each project. So if it's the project that I'm working on is an usage transparency, which is an issue where our customers are saying that most of the customers are saying that when they buy bundles it's depleted quite fast and they have like this kind of th thinking or mentality that safaricom is not giving them the actual bundles that they bought so our project is basically the project that i'm working on is basically to uh, shed light on your usage like if you buy 50 mbs will give you a breakdown that you went on twitter use this mb if you went on facebook use this something of, something of that sort so for that i make sure that for that particular project at least i get something done like just even just one thing like maybe create a kafka topic 
to separate WhatsApp um, or to separate, just separate some kind of messages from the other. Just make sure I have something done for that particular project because the next day when I'm going for my stand up, I have to tell my team, my tribe, what I did the previous day with regards to that project. So, yep. Do your team members have different time zones? Nope. No, we are, most all of them are working in Kenya. Though at my previous uh, company, which was Simfix, um, the, the, the whole of my team was two hours behind, right? So they are two hours behind. So if I wake up at eight, it's six their time. And sometimes we were working at 2 a.m. my time, which is 12 p.m. that time. So they didn't even, it was quite, I don't know, they weren't considerate of my time zone at times because of the loads of work that we had, which was quite an issue. But if you get team members that understand that you're in different time zones and give you your space, that's, that works. How was your experience with Omdena? Oh God, someone did some research. Uh, with Omdena, it was quite a learning experience. I got to learn a lot, uh, working on the different projects, working with people from different um, countries, doing various, um, being in various roles. So it was, I actually joined Omdena just to learn how to work on real world projects. Because here in Chan Academy, you're just given a project and you're told, do this. Uh, you're given a guideline on how to do a, part, a certain project, which is not how it works in the real world. In the real world, you're just given a project and you have to think through it, come up with um, ideas, milestones on how you'll achieve all that. So um, Dana really helped me out with that. Any chance Safaricom is looking for junior? data engineers currently because I'm, yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm, I'd say I'm a junior data engineer as well. So yeah, we're looking for data engineers. Um, I'd say prepare yourself adequately, right? Prepare yourself adequately for these roles. And, you know, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions, but with regards to the services that I've talked about, NIFI, Kafka, understanding the whole Hadoop environment, if you're able to do that and present that kind of knowledge during the interview, you'll get through. How was self interview process? Um, like I said, there was a coding interview, uh, which was uh, on codility, which entails writing Java code um, queries uh, Oracle, Postgres kind of queries, and uh, a bit of questions on Agile framework, and then the one-on-one -on -one interview with the manager, and then, yeah, that was it. So, yeah, I think I've answered all your questions. Yeah, I think you answered them great. Thank you very much for the time. We are still... Uh, if you guys have uh, uh, many other questions, yeah. just to uh, ask, uh, ask them, and then we will be. Um, apart from the technical thing that we have like, discussed, what do you do for um, for fun? Like when you're not working, what do you do? Oh, when I'm not working, I'm dancing, I'm joking around, I'm playing with my <laughs> small brothers. Um, mm -hmm. During the weekends, I go for nature walks, just have a good time with my friends so that's what i do i also <clears throat> i have really good friends from ted academy who we're still really close with and have calls during the weekend and just catch up on how our all our paths have gone in terms of career wise in terms of um what are our financial goals so i have also a good connection with most of um, the ten academy alumni. So yeah. Great. That's that's very good to hear. So um watch for do the same thing. Don't lose your friends. Keep them close. Yeah, don't lose actually when 
mm, one of my friends called Patrick who was part part of Batch Four. He's the one who gave me books on Hadoop, uh, gave me lessons on Java. So it was really nice that that they 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 are the ones who came through. Even when I was even during the interview process, and I told them that I'm having this interview, they kind of asked me questions. How prepared are you? So I'm really glad that I still have those friends that I can count on. And funny fact is that Patrick is in Nigeria. We don't talk. We we are not even in the same country. Um, the other ones like Ada and Kevin. Kevin, I know is helping you guys out. We're in the same country. We've never seen each other, but we are really close friends. So yeah. So don't. This is your connection right here. Make sure that when you leave um to an academy that you still maintain these connections because they'll help you out even when you're searching for jobs uh, these are the guys that you'll reach out to and ask them how was the interview process how did your interview process go and maybe learn one or two things from them so, yeah. yeah i remember i remember it was a bit of a competition you know Ten Academy is quite competitive, but also yeah. make sure you build these uh, friendships even when you're trying to be competitive. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I think we still have like we still have like twenty five minutes. So, guys, ask um, questions. I think most of them have been asking a data engineer related question. Have you worked on um? any uh, migration like you migrated a particular tech stack to another tech stack probably change a database or you change a, a, a i2 that you were using before and then you need to like change it have you done something like that i've done migrations yeah especially at simfix i did migrations from postgres to oracle when we're trying to kind of um make our database sync for all for all our projects kind of synchronous so we wanted to use oracle for all our projects and we had to migrate some of those databases i'm actually seeing some questions here how did you adjust yeah. after 10 academy did your life slow down yeah kind of it did slow down because 10 academy is quite there's a lot to do you you're you're learning every day you have challenges you have projects it did slow down, but when I got back, when I got into a, a good job, the, the job that I got into, I kind of caught up. Like I went back to the same old routine. Given that with 10 Academy, I was, you know, you're working long hours on projects, on meeting your deadlines and all that. So given that I was able to do that in 10 Academy, when I got into Simfix, which is also a high, uh, a fast paced kind of environment, I was able to, you know, camouflage and work in that kind of environment. So yeah, it did slow down for a bit of a time when we were doing job searching, but it went up. How was your job searching process? Oh God, it was stressful. <laughs> Your job searching is stressful. You have to um, keep on writing cover letters. Like I remember we, as 10 Academy team, we had a spreadsheet with some of my friends and they'd post, if you find a job anywhere in LinkedIn, anywhere, you'd put it in that spreadsheet and people, guys will just apply, guys will just apply. And then you'd have your own spreadsheet of the kind of all the jobs that you're um, applying to and you'd find even the best of the best of being didn't get offers and you have to apply to a lot of jobs and some don't reply so that's just like don't give up too easily right if it's what you want just keep on searching keep on looking you'll find it so i i can't tell you that job searching it might be easy for some people especially if um, 10 Academy is doing it on your behalf, right? It's because it's actually like they're selling you and, you know, it's quite easy if it's in that sense. But if you're doing it by yourself, 
trust me, it's it's kind of hard. It's not it's not like it's not doable. It's doable, but it's hard. So you just have to hang in there. So what is your education background? Like I said, I did uh, math and computer science, mathematics and computer science for my undergraduate. How much tight are the deadlines in your job? So um, we work with we work with uh, scrums and kind of by two weeks, this is what this is the kind of product that we want to have out. So my deadlines are not that tight. Let me say that because I have a lot of time to work on my particular tasks. So it's not that tight unless and we don't we don't we first start with UAT, which is user acceptance testing in the dev environment and then move to production. So by the time you're moving to production, you already have a working viable product. So yeah. Great, great. Um, what well, all the questions that just popped into my um, head is like, do, do you use um, cloud infrastructures at um, SAF? So right now, our team is not using, we have a project on AWS, but it's still in the development. So, yeah. Oh, I kind of um, lost you at some point. I didn't get to meet you. Oh, 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 I'm saying, um, I'm saying right now, we're not using cloud products, right? We have servers, we have data centers across the country and we've ensured there's high av availability of uh, our servers by distributing them to different places in the country, just in case there's any kind of issue with one da data center, another data center can pick it up. Though we, we are looking towards implementing um, a cloud-based solution, it's a, a project that's in development right now, and we hope it will move to production quite soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, we. I think we still have like um, enough. That. What would you consider like a good tech stack um, tool for a junior um, data engineer? So, for instance, you know, in um, SAF, you mentioned that you use um, Hadoop and uh, some Java into that. So, apart from um, working with Hadoop, Nifi, and the rest, what other tech uh, um, tech tools are like important or nice to have? for um, junior data engineers? Um, I think Apache Spark. I think Spark is also quite um, a tool that is coming up and is being used, especially right now. So being able to use, I think Spark is a tool that, you know, a junior data engineer, because that's what I started with when I was learning on DataCamp there's that whole uh, path on Apache Spark and using either Scala, or Python, or PySpark to to be able to do. Oh, sorry. So yeah, I think Spark. Okay. Um, there are other questions like... Um, what is your experience with bad or missing data? Bad or missing data? Well, I've not, right now I've not experienced missing data if, because of how, um, you know, if you do a transaction, there's like, there's a hundred percent, like right now in Safaricom, if you buy bundles, there's a hundred percent assurance that that uh, transaction message will reach the database. So we really have cases of missing data maybe bad data, maybe bad data in terms of, um, which, which, which would be the best example, but maybe bad data, but not missing data. I think where it's supposed to go right if we want to change it 
maybe the main thing that we can focus on is maybe changing the format of the data if it's uh, in terms of JSON, we want it to go um, in terms of an Avro kind of format or a JSON format. So we don't look at the details. We just fill the pipelines and make sure we get the data. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. One of um, great questions, great answers. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Any other um, questions? I'll, um, I'd also advise is I'd also advise you guys to uh, get create connections with people on LinkedIn, especially if you want to do data engineering. Find someone who's in data engineering field that you know you can learn from, right? Do your do your own research, read blogs, um, listen to podcasts. So if you are sure this is what you want to go with, then go fully in with it. Learn the skills, network, because even if you have the skills and you, you know, you don't have that, um, like, right, for me, I didn't have the skills, but because I had the connection, it was easier for me to join Safaricom because now I reached out to some people who are there and they told me, actually, we're looking for data engineers, so, send me your CV, and that's how the whole interview process started. So, yeah. So it was not like an advertised job, it's like a connection it, it was, and then it, it was, it was, it was, but it was easier for me to join, given that, you know, I was able to follow up with specific people who are actually inside the organization, right? Yeah. So it was easier for me to understand the whole scope of what they wanted. So I didn't I didn't even know when the data post data engineering post was there on the website. The guy I was talking to is the one who told me, here's the link, apply. So yeah. Having yes. that connection was a plus for me. Yeah. Um how do you decide um which to to use for um project? Like if you want to um, orchestrate a particular um, part of a project. We have like different tools to use. Is it based on what the um, company subscribes in, or you are allowed to like test other open source tools and then bring out some ground truth in there? So right now, we have already set standards for how our pipelines work. We have a whole architecture of um, if something is coming from this kind of source and you know you're putting it to this different source these are the steps to follow so we already have a well laid out uh, step and procedure though if you want to try it i don't think there's anything we can substitute like nifi i don't think there's a good enough tool to substitute it with so right now we are using the best tools that are there yeah. that's why we're not taking up How do you integrate your work? Oh, okay. How do you integrate your work with that of the rest of the team? Um, I don't. Do you mean the like the pipelines or what station? Maybe you can kind of elaborate. Are you on mute, Stacy? An explain. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm asking from the context of uh, us using GitHub, and then everyone works separately, and then we have to bring them together. And sometimes it's uh, it's a bit hectic, and I was wondering how you guys do that. Well, we okay for that we have GitHub. That's what we use for our projects. So that's how we version control all our code, and you know contribute to each other projects, something of the sort. But like I said, um. What we basically do mostly, like for me, it's just building pipelines, which involves connecting NIFI to Kafka, which does not most of the time require me to write code unless I'm writing code for maybe setting alerts, um, maybe building my own custom code to send an alert. And I'd want 
uh, the team to help me with that then i'd create a project on github and add my team members and they'd see all that but for my pipelines like knife to kafka i just i just need to you know go into the server change a few configures configurations so that's not something that can be version controlled right so but if it's version control then we use github yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, any other questions? Um, and you've been giving out um a lot of um advice as to how to go about getting the job as well as uh, not leaving the family that you've we've got with um ten academy. Any other um advice that you would give for the batch for training? Um, maybe I'd say be curious and have a growth mindset, right? From here, I know you've learned a lot. You've done a lot of projects. You feel like you're about to go and accomplish <laughs> and do a lot in the world, right? So I want, when you join your new job, be curious, um, be productive, see what kind of value you can add to your job, right? Because when I left my previous job, I had built the team so much that they wanted to kind of, they, when I said I was leaving, they're like, no, don't leave. We'll add salary, we'll, you know. <laughs> they're also telling me, oh, we'll build the team around you, something of the sort. Also from that, from that same experience, know what you want to do, right? For me, I wanted to do data engineering. And if I was just going for the money, I'd have stayed at my previous company, but because I want to build a solid career out of data engineering with my background in math and computer science, with uh, being able to do some data science projects. So even with that money being offered to me, I still knew that I wanted to take the data engineering uh, path. So I didn't kind of forfeit my or my vision or what I wanted to do just because of the money. And it's now paying off because now I'm even at a better company, um, exposed to more tools, exposed to more resources. So, yeah. yeah. What was the specific role of your previous job? I was a BI developer, stroke data analyst, stroke DBA. <laughs> So yeah, your LinkedIn, Stephanie Morganda. I posted it on the chat. If you want to email me, Stephanie at email. You want to text me? Okay. And don't be afraid. Ask questions. No one knows it all. Right? Everyone is just trying to figure it out at the end of the day. No one knows it all. So yeah. I yeah. think that's it. Sure. No one knows it all. Thank you very much, um, Stephanie. Uh, can we get um, two of the two of the trainees to unmute and just uh, a word of um, thanks to Stefan, probably one male, one female. No? Zalala, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. It was a very insightful session and i enjoyed this uh, the lot a lot of the parts and it i could also relate with our next journey like finding a job and how to fit uh, with new companies so that was great and thank you for having us and uh, yeah keep up the good work thank you um, 
Stashi. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us and uh, for all the advice and taking your time to take us through your journey. Uh, we really appreciate it and the contacts too. And uh, yeah, we keep wishing you all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stashi. You're welcome. So I, I hear you're about to graduate, right? Yeah, we are doing um we have our graduation this week, Friday, first of um, October. Yeah. Am I invited? <laughs> of course you are invited. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you are invited. I yeah. Okay, cool. I, I, I feel I'll, like I've just invited myself though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll personally send the the Jimmy link to you. Okay, cool. So, yeah, thank you very thank much you. for joining and sharing a lot of um, knowledge and experience. I'm sure we are inspired. We have gained a lot of knowledge as well. And um, thank you for the good words. So continue yeah, to you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you also for attending. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. Have a nice evening. Yeah. You too.